Welcome to the world where your plants transform magically right in front of your eyes. This is the art of pruning. Imagine a world where plants like butterflies metamorphose from the ordinary to the extraordinary, where old and worn out branches give way to vibrant new growth. This is the world of pruning, a world where you, yes you, hold the power to shape the destiny of your plants. Pruning, though it may seem like a modern gardening technique, has roots that reach deep into the annals of history, it was the ancient Egyptians who first discovered this wonder. They found that by trimming the branches of their fig trees they could stimulate the growth of sweet luscious fruits. And so, the art of pruning was born. Fast forward a few millennia and pruning has evolved into an essential practice for gardeners around the globe. It's more than just snipping away at branches and leaves. It's a strategic operation, a calculated dance between the gardener and the plant, each cut a deliberate choice to guide the plant's growth and development. But why, you may ask? Is pruning so important? Well, pruning is like a health check for your plants. It removes the old, the diseased, the damaged, allowing the plant to focus its energy on fresh, healthy growth. It's a rejuvenating process a way to breathe new life into your plants and keep them at the peak of their health and beauty. And the transformation, oh the transformation, it's like watching your plants come alive. One moment, they're overgrown, their branches weighed down by the burden of excess foliage. The next, they're standing tall and proud, their leaves vibrant, their branches reaching out to the sky, a testament to the magic of pruning. Now before we get carried away, let's remember that pruning is an art, a skill that requires knowledge and practice. But don't worry, we're here to guide you every step of the way. Now that you've been introduced to the magic of pruning, let's dive into the specifics. Ever wondered why pruning is an essential part of plant care? Let's unfold this science. Pruning, simply put, is the strategic removal of certain parts of a plant, be it branches, buds, or roots. But why do we prune? Is it just to give our plants a neat, tidy look, or is there more to it? Well, first and foremost, pruning promotes plant health. By removing dead or diseased branches, we prevent the spread of decay organisms and disease. This not only keeps the plant healthy, but also extends its lifespan. It's like giving your plants a new lease on life. Another reason we prune is to encourage fruit and flower growth. In fruit trees, for instance, pruning helps to balance the tree's energy resources between its vegetative growth and fruit production. This is because when we prune, we're essentially directing the plant's energy towards the buds that will produce the most fruit or flowers. It's a bit like being a plant coach, guiding your team towards the best possible performance. Pruning can also help prevent disease and pest infestations. Overgrown branches often create a dense canopy that blocks sunlight and restricts airflow. This can create a damp, dark environment that's perfect for pests and disease. By pruning and thinning out the branches, we ensure that sunlight and air can reach all parts of the plant, making it harder for pests and disease to take hold. Additionally, Pruning can influence the shape and size of a plant, making it more suitable for its environment. This is particularly useful in landscaping and bonsai culture, where the aesthetic appeal of the plant is as important as its health. Finally, let's not forget safety. Dead or weak branches can fall and cause injury or damage. Pruning these branches can prevent accidents and keep everyone safe. So, you see, pruning is not just an art, it's a science that benefits your plants immensely. It's about understanding the needs of your plants and helping them to thrive. Whether you're growing roses, apple trees, or bonsai, pruning is a skill that every gardener should master. And we're here to help you do just that, so stay tuned for the next segment where we'll dive into the how of pruning. Now that you know why to prune, it's time to learn how to prune. Pruning is an art, and like any art, it requires practice, precision, and patience. But don't worry, with a few tips and the right tools, you'll be a pro in no time. Let's start with the tools. For most pruning tasks, you'll need three basic tools a pair of hand pruners, loppers, and a pruning saw. Hand pruners are perfect for small branches and twigs, loppers can handle larger branches and a pruning saw is useful for the thickest branches. Always make sure your tools are sharp and clean, this ensures a clean cut and prevents the spread of disease. Now, on to the technique. Pruning is not just about cutting off branches. It's about knowing where and when to make those cuts. Always make your cut just above a bud that is facing the direction you want the new branch to grow. This is usually outward facing to promote a more open structure. When cutting, angle your cut about a quarter inch above the bud. This is because the bud will die back to its base. So if you cut too close, you risk killing the bud. But if you cut too far away, the stub left behind could rot and infect the living wood. 
For larger branches, you'll want to use a three-cut method. This prevents the bark from tearing and causing damage. First, make a small cut on the underside of the branch about a foot away from the trunk. Then, cut through the branch from the top a few inches further out from the first cut. Finally, cut the remaining stub back to the branch collar, which is the swollen area where the branch meets the trunk. Safety is crucial when pruning. Always wear protective eyewear and gloves and never reach above your shoulders to make a cut. Remember, pruning is a process. Don't try to achieve perfection in one season. It's better to make a few well-thought-out cuts than many hasty ones. With these techniques in your arsenal, you're all set to give your plants a makeover. Knowing when to prune is as important as knowing how to prune. The timing of your pruning can make a significant difference to the health and growth of your plants. Generally, the best times to prune are late winter or early spring, just before the new growth begins. This is because most plants are dormant during this time, and pruning can stimulate fresh, healthy growth as the weather warms up. However, not all plants should be pruned at the same time. For instance, spring-flowering plants, like azaleas and rhododendrons, set their flower buds in the fall. So if you prune these in late winter or early spring, you may remove the upcoming season's flowers. The best time to prune these is immediately after they finish blooming. On the other hand, summer flowering plants like roses and hydrangeas bloom on new wood, meaning they form their flower buds on the current season's growth. For these plants, late winter or early spring pruning encourages a flush of new growth that will carry the blooms. Evergreen shrubs and trees like boxwoods and pines are best pruned in late spring or early summer when the new growth has hardened off. Pruning too early can stimulate tender new growth that might be damaged by late spring frosts. But how do you know when a plant needs pruning? Some telltale signs include dead or diseased wood, overcrowded branches, and growth that is out of proportion with the rest of the plant. Pruning these areas can improve the plant's health and appearance. However, remember that not all plants need regular pruning. Some, like lavender and rosemary, prefer a lighter touch, with just a little shaping and removal of dead wood as needed. So, in a nutshell, the best time to prune depends largely on the type of plant and its flowering habit. A good rule of thumb is to prune just before growth starts in the season or right after flowering. Remember, timing is everything in pruning. Let's wrap up by reinforcing why pruning is a game-changer for your garden. Pruning, as we've seen, is not just about trimming away branches and leaves. It's a carefully orchestrated dance between gardener and plant, a process that can transform your garden into a verdant paradise. But what makes pruning so special? Let's delve into the visible and invisible benefits that this simple yet powerful gardening technique can bring. Firstly, let's talk aesthetics. Pruning helps maintain the shape of your plants, giving your garden a neat and tidy appearance. It's like giving your plants a haircut, ensuring they always look their best. But it's not all about looks. Pruning also promotes the overall health of your plants. By removing dead or diseased branches, you're stopping the spread of disease and pests, and allowing your plants to channel their energy into new growth. Now let's touch on the invisible benefits. Pruning stimulates growth in the areas of the plant where you want it. By strategic cutting you can influence the direction of growth, encouraging the plant to produce more flowers or fruits, or to grow in a particular shape. It's an art form that taps into the natural rhythms of the plant life, harnessing them for your garden's benefit. Another invisible benefit of pruning is the improvement of air circulation and light penetration within the plant. This not only helps to reduce the likelihood of certain diseases, but also contributes to a better photosynthesis process, which in turn leads to healthier and stronger plants. Lastly, pruning is beneficial for the gardener too. It's a therapeutic activity, allowing you to connect with your garden on a deeper level. It's a time for observation, for understanding the unique needs of each plant, and for responding to those needs with care and precision. So, there you have it. Pruning is not just a chore or a maintenance task, it's a transformative process that can bring out the best in your garden and in you as a gardener. So, grab your pruning shears and let your plants experience the magic of pruning.